today's world of high-speed connection, text messaging, and social networking, we often find ourselves searching for information. There are millions of blogs on the internet, news, sports, politics, and tech, but I bring it all together for you and present it in a relentlessly unconventional fashion. My name is Zinni Abraham, and this is The Blog Report. It's time now for news. Folks, this is Vincent Greshaw. He is a person I met at Comic-Con last year and subject that I think one of the best videos I've ever made because that was just spontaneous fun. With, yeah. You know, it was just, it's a classic. It's classic. The TGI Fridays. Yeah, TGI Fridays in San Diego. With buckets of beer <laughs> everywhere. Actually, good beer. Very good. And, you know, Evan and I have the same birthday. Wasn't that wild? You know? I know, yeah. yeah. That, no, that, it was that. August. Uh, it's, yeah, it's crazy. Hey, um, first of all, congratulations on Bellflower and its success because it's advancing along. And I have one question because I've seen the movie now five times. Oh, really? Yeah. And when you, you when we had met, you hadn't seen it yet. They, well, she had sent me a what I later described, discovered the disket that she sent me, she being um, Emmy. Yeah. Emily. Emily. And it was my fault that I had misplaced it because she had, it wasn't anybody's fault but mine. Oh, because okay. I was scatterbrained. And I was looking around for it. And I said, hey, you didn't send it. And she goes, yeah, I did send it. And she was right. She did send it. And fortunately, I wasn't lambasting her or anything. You know, it was just me being in a hurry and everything. But I've, sent yeah. it, I've seen it five times since. And wow. I, have, <laughs> I, have, I love the movie. I have a question. Okay. All right. Was that sex scene between you and Jennifer real? You, me and Jesse, you mean? Jesse, yeah. No, no, it wasn't at all. Okay. And um, I mean, that, you know, the, the funny thing about that that scene is that was the first day of filming, and only like the second time I ever met Jesse. Wow. Yeah, and so Jesse. it was really funny just because uh, I that was the first time I had met a lot of the people involved, and so that was like the way to just like here we go, like this is about to get crazy. Like that started the whole summer. So. <laughs> wow, that's. But yeah, no, it wasn't real. But I mean, it, you know, it was convincing. You did a great job. Guys. I had to ask because before we uh, talk about cold water, which I'm really excited to talk to you about, I was playing it, and my friend who doubles as my cleaning lady was in the background, and this scene came on, and I think she was going to beat the crap out of me. So, <laughs> yeah, I said, what kind of poor movie are you watch? I said, no, you don't get it. You don't get it. It's, it's like you know. Yeah. So anyway, fantastic movie. I'll be watching it sixth, seventh, eighth time. Oscilloscope wow. picture is fantastic. Hey, um, yeah, we're about to come out in Japan actually in theaters. Wow! Yeah, uh, I think on the sixteenth. Are you going? This, to, are you going to Japan? Are you going to Tokyo? Or? I wish. I mean, uh, I don't know if I'm going to be able to. It's kind of busy. Wow! But I would love yeah. to. I've never been to Tokyo. Yeah, you're the thing that you're busy with is cold water. And yes. From what I understand, you have spent the thirteen years of your life. Well, yeah, because um, I initially wrote it. I was. Um, 18 and yeah it was my first thing I actually really took a stab at writing feature wise and you know I was just got out of high school and that was the first thing but yeah so it's been a long time it's been ups and downs trying to get this made what I have so many questions but first of all this is your directorial debut your first one so the features yeah features yeah, yeah I mean because you've done other smaller videos and everything else yeah. of a huge movie like this but who is your directorial inspiration? Evan, perhaps? I mean, just, you know. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I love Evan because he's, um, we're totally different filmmakers. Like, so actually, no, he wouldn't be one. It, it was funny because I met him. We both had put up short films at the same time back in like We, we, we talked about Evan Glodell who created Bellflower, by the way. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. 2003 or 2004, um, that's when I had met him. We had both submitted our short films on this online website. And uh, so... I had watched his just because I had seen that it was just uploaded as well, and it was insane. And you know, he's crazy. And yeah. So <laughs> the the cool thing is, is we're very different, but we really got along. And um, I just thought he was really talented. So I like to kind of get, <clears throat> you know, meet other filmmakers that you know that I like, and so I believe in his stuff and look forward to making more of his movies. Was 
his work and your involvement in Belfar, what was that the, the psychological catalyst that made you say, okay, now I've got the right people I can I've networked and I'm now I'm ready and you're working with a great production company. Was that what did it or was it prior to that? Or And how did these other players come into to, to, uh, the um, Well, obviously Cold Water, like I said, something I've had on my plate for a while. And it's always something I either wanted to do right or not do at all. And um, it, it came close to happening a couple of times and then would fall through. And those times I was just the writer. So I was younger and, you know, you know, I just, I wasn't taking on the directing thing. And then, um, uh, yeah, I think the whole thing, everything that happened with Bellflower, you know, really changed, you know, the, the amount of relationships and people I've met in the last year overwhelmed like 10 years, to be honest. So, um, <clears throat> I think it lended a lot of credibility for, for me and Evan and all of us to really just say, okay, this is what we want to do now and make things happen for ourselves. And so that's kind of what was the catalyst to everything that happened with Bellflower, I think. I mean, to really, you know, for me to then get funding and then bring in the right people on this project that I can trust and get my back. And that's, so that's kind of how they're involved, is people that, you know, they're like family. So it's like a big family unit. So. Yeah, but also, you stuck with this for 13 years with the story about how juvenile delinquents, if you are, privately rehabilitated, rehabilitated these private organizations. So emotionally, this really caught me. I mean, the person that you, I understand, I'd like to, for you to talk about this. Yeah, so, yeah. Why did it hold, let me ask you, ask a dumb question. Why did it hold you for so long? What, what did you see, you know, that, well, that bothered you? Yeah. You know, when I initially had written it, um, I had done a little bit of research, but again, I was younger and, uh, one of the reasons, actually, I remember starting this was when I when I was in my teens, I used to play hockey, and I was on this tournament hockey team, and uh, I remember like a lot of these guys that I played with, they were um, they reminded me a lot of the kids in, the, in Larry Clark's movie, Kids, and they were really just they had that kind of vibe, and you know I had a, a lot of different close friends, but I was close with these guys too, and so I saw a lot of their behavior, and it was you know it was new for me, but then. Um, our goalie, I remember, had disappeared one day and was just gone. And we were like, you know, what happened? And he had been sent to one of these places, and he never came back to play with us. And he, when he came out, he was a lot worse. He came out a lot worse. How and worse? Some of the stuff, well, you just, you know, I, I, I think he went in for stuff, you know, like whether it was ditching school or smoking cigarettes, you know, at a young age. Or his parents just kind of... You know, I don't know what their home life was like either, but they had sent him away. And, you know, a lot of times it's for desperate reasons, like they feel like they can't do anything. And so they sent him away. And he came back and he just, he, he fell into deeper, you know, deeper stuff. And so that's kind of last I had heard of him and he wasn't doing well. But that was, I was in my late teens. And so I wrote this and um, having researched over the last 10 years, it, it, you can see that things have gotten worse in this uh, topic up to even um, one of the recent things that uh, as far as national news was uh, the kid in uh, I think it was Florida right. he was at a boot camp and he was killed and this time though it was on video and so it was something that people had to answer to because you know for the most part no, there's no accountability but there's also no evidence and they could you know they can say whatever they want and um, this kid was killed and it was all on video like surveillance video from the place and it had like eight, seven or eight uh, counselor guys beating him and you know restraining him and throwing him to the, to the ground and because he didn't want to run and he said he couldn't he wasn't feeling right and they thought he was lying and then there was even a nurse standing by and this is all in the video and so he ends up dying there that day and uh, at first they were like oh it's a uh, the, the the medical examiner had said that it was uh, you know from sickle cell and it, they had nothing to do with his death and then, so he was buried, and, and there was kind of an uproar, and, and people were, you know, protesting and all that. And so they did a second autopsy with a, uh, a praised medical examiner in New York. His name is Michael Bain, and uh, he did it. And then he was like, "No, he died from his injuries at that place." And so then, so somebody had to kind of, you know, they had to take that serious. And so they prosecuted all seven guys, seven or eight counselors, and the nurse for manslaughter, and they were all acquitted. All of them. And Whoa. so they're 
nobody nobody was uh, punished for that kid's death. And so I, I think they want a lawsuit civilly, but as far as criminal charges, you know, it's again one of those things where it's like, well, who can you put the, you know blame on? And what we're talking about are, in some cases, private special ed schools, right? Yeah, a lot, some of them I mean, are actually in Oakland. I've actually I don't want to name names because I don't want the people I'm thinking about to think that I'm implicating them in a negative way. But yeah. they are private organizations. They're private nonprofits, right? Yeah, and and here's the thing: a lot of them, and I, I'm not here to say that all of them are bad. I'm not. I'm just say that we should open our eyes a little bit and and you know look into Absolutely. some of these problems and the claims of abuse and and people have died. There's a lot of people have died over the last 20 years. Did your friend and, die, by the way? You know no, my friend didn't die. My friend just came out worse. And, you know, as a teenager, you know, when you're thrown into a, a place like that, you know, and you may have some out, you're a kid, you know, we, like I said, these guys were like the, in, the kids in the movie kids. And I just think, uh, you know, just to send them away and, uh, out of desperation and some testimonial videos from the place, you know, without really doing extensive research on what the place actually is, it could have been, you know, a problem, and it's evident that people come out of there a lot of times worse. You've got how is you said now you're looking for cast members for people watching this who might want to dive in. What, what should they do? Um, well, um, you know, one of the approaches is just to, I, I want real type of people. You know, I don't want you know I want real kids in this movie, and so the casting process so far has been great. Like, and after you know living with. The script for so long, I feel like these characters in a way exist, you know, one, because we're touching on the reality behind it, and so it's kind of a voice for people that have been in these places. And then two, it's just, I, when you live with a project this long, I know those characters better than even, you know, some friends of mine, just because you create them in your head. And yeah. So, I don't know, it's ama it's been amazing casting this and seeing people actually reading it, and, and there's some amazing actors out there for on, on lower budget levels that just want to jump in and are going to, you know, jump on board this thing with just, you know, 100%. Yeah, it sounds like you've got something that could be a classic and it's timely and um, needed because I don't know of, yeah, I don't know of too much material content out there about this in the movie level. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, there's Frankly. there's not a lot. I mean, there are a couple movies um, that have been made about rehabilitation and different, more like boarding schools or you know other kind of privately run places. I know actually a couple of people that had one that had a, a movie years ago, and so it's just it, it, if anything, it's just good to kind of continue shedding light on this. So you go to the Sierra Nevada mountains and God, come back yeah. alive, please, in August. And uh, <laughs> what's that? You go to Sierra oh, Nevada, back right? Alive? Yeah, 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 as I, as I uh, yeah. Come back alive, please. Yeah, uh, and be, I know we've got a meeting coming up. So, in closing, anything else you want the audience to know? Or, be... um, yeah, let me see. Uh, well, I mean, we'll, obviously, we're shooting this summer, and we're you know we're hoping to be done and submitted in time for Sundance. So, you know, that's kind of my goal with it. Um, but yeah, just you know, I just want people to be aware of the movie, and uh, you know, I look forward to getting it finished. Hey, how about Telluride? How about Telluride? Uh, I'm sure we'll take a stab at all of them, but I think the first one we're going for is Sundance because okay, you know, I was about to send a shout out to my friend Gary Meyer, who's the president. So that's I actually I, I met him at Cannes last year. He's a good guy. Uh, yeah. yeah, no, we all shared a bottle of wine. That was nice. Nice, nice. <laughs> So, um, but yeah, I, I mean, other than that, I just, you know, keep in touch and uh, I look forward to talking more with you about it. Definitely. And so, hey, Vince, thanks a lot. Yes, any other questions down the road, let me know. Yeah. I, tell, I was telling her a bit about Bellflower because she was actually in the movie in a scene that we had cut out. I don't know oh, you're you kidding. Oh, no. Jed Friel was in Bellflower. Oh wow! <laughs> yeah, and I, I'll tell you, I'll tell you as the a scene she was in. Uh, it was towards the old part of the video. That's cool. <laughs> yeah, I mean, um, 
shit. I don't, I don't know if Evan will want me talking about it, but a, there was a scene that was cut out of the movie of her at a bar and she was like some pretty girl and Evan's character and Tyler's character, they were there trying to meet girls. And, um, uh, basically Evan's character kind of hits on her and she totally like disses him. <laughs> and then Tyler comes up and and throws a drink in her face. Basically, oh, no. like accidentally pretends to knock a drink and it goes all over her face. And she's like, <laughs> like goes off on them and they run out of there. And so, <laughs> <laughs> That's so perfect for her because yeah. in her blog, Talk Nerdy Between Lover, she meets guys in bars. Uh, I mean, so yeah. what you just told me, that's, I got to put, that's perfect. <laughs> yeah. I, feel, I feel bad for her because we cut it, but I mean, it was really funny. It just didn't work. Oh man, her last entry that I responded to was on fetishes. And how oh, some, okay. It was like her first date around a foot fetish. So Yeah, you should ask her about balloon fetishes or something because uh, I had recently seen something on well, that. She knows True. that I have a, a woman thigh fetish because she's got great thighs, so <laughs> it's like... Hey, true story. That's funny. <laughs> I'm going to get in so much trouble. 